Well, we have crews all over our area covering different protests. We're going to begin with Spencer Blake, who is in the East Valley. Spencer, what's going on over there? Well, you can still see the lights behind me of downtown Gilbert. This is right along Gilbert Road, but the protest here did wrap up before 8 o'clock, but there was a very powerful moment between police here in Gilbert and the protesters. Take a look at this. We had some uh, of this video from earlier today where Gilbert Police Chief Michael Solberg was among the officers who took a knee with protesters this evening. Uh, this was after they marched from near Water Tower Plaza up to the police station. We talked to the organizer of the protest about how it felt to see the police involved in a show of unity. Honestly, it feels like a win. We had the Chandler Chief take a knee with us and march with us first, and now here we are in Gilbert doing the same thing. We just want to be heard. The people want to be heard. It's time for a change. We want a change. We don't want politicians saying that they're going to make a change, but their actions ain't speaking louder than words. It's time for a change, and the people want change, and this is why we have the biggest civil rights movement going on in the United States of America right now. So those protesters and the officers together ch uh, chanted Black Lives Matter. They held up their fists in solidarity. Now, there were some signs behind the officers saying defund 12, referring to police, and yet we still had that moment of solidarity between protesters and officers. Now, a father we spoke with at the protest says this is definitely a step in the right direction. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a, a long journey, a long road, but it's my son right here. This Cameron King Phillips. And, you know, I worry about him every day when he runs off. So I'm hoping that we can get to a place where, where I don't have to worry about that. Now, he says this was one of the biggest turnouts the East Valley has seen so far. Chandler BLM had a few hundred people out here tonight. They were the organizers of this one. They do plan to have another protest sometime next week. They're still working on the particulars, but they talked about it having protests in various cities in the East Valley. They said that it might be something they do in Scottsdale next week. Now, meanwhile, there was also a tweet put out by the Gilbert Police Department tonight. They said thanks to everyone who came out to this evening's protest. We appreciated the opportunity to connect with our community members and simply listen to what they had to say. Have a safe night and stay safe. Now, there were also some powerful moments from protesters in Phoenix tonight. Morgan Lowe was there for all of those solemn moments. He's live in downtown right now. What did you see today, Morgan? Spencer, well, right now it is all quiet here. The protesters began leaving at about 7.15 tonight, well ahead of that 8 p.m. curfew. And by the time the curfew hit, it looked a lot like it does now. We're at 4th Avenue and Adams, and this part of downtown Phoenix is pretty much deserted. The only vehicles coming by are squad cars, police squad cars, but it looked a lot different earlier today when there were more than a thousand protesters out on these streets. We counted, you know, estimate anywhere from 1500 to 2000 people, all peaceful, all passionate, all protesting racial injustice and police brutality. They marched in a three mile square around downtown chanting, hands up, don't shoot, Black Lives Matter and I Can't Breathe, referring to the words George Floyd uttered in Minneapolis before he died. And the most powerful moments came at 6.30 tonight when these thousands of people laid down face down on the asphalt in the middle of Van Buren and remained still and silent for 8 minutes 46 seconds, signifying the amount of time that a Minneapolis police officer had his knee on George Floyd's neck. I asked some of the demonstrators what that moment meant to them. I started crying like while my face was down. It was really uncomfortable, but like that's what he went through and we were just sitting there, you know. Our legs were burning, but like I didn't want to get up because that's just like what he went through and he went through way worse. I guess what we were trying to do was just, you know, for a minute put ourselves in his shoes and for me personally, I could really feel it. It was a surreal scene, complete silence in downtown Phoenix in a crowd of thousands of people. Now, this protest was peaceful, and I didn't see anybody get arrested. Police did not interfere with the protesters, except at the end of the night when they announced that the curfew was coming up and that they were going to enforce it. Whitney and Scene, back to you guys.
Well, Morgan, one of the things that we have heard reports from police, even the U.S. Attorney General, is that protesters were coming in from out of town. What did you notice on the ground there today? Yeah, I talked to a lot of these protesters. We had some people who, who go to these, you know, religiously, who show up at protests. We also had people from all over the valley, young people who just wanted to come, ordinary people to just hope that them showing up here would inspire some kind of change. Uh, I could not find anybody who had come in from out of town um, for this protest. It just, it really seemed like these were homegrown people who want to make a difference in their community. All right, our chief investigative reporter, Morgan Lowe, reporting live from downtown Phoenix on the Saturday night.